All right, so now that we have dealt with um, some examples involving line integrals of functions of two variables, how about we try out a function of three variables now? So basically, we're going to integrate this function uh, based on this three-dimensional curve here. So it is a helix, and we're already given the parameterization here. So basically, we're going to represent x. We have cosine of t then for y we have sine of t, and then for z we have just 3t. So what that means is that essentially you have a helix that has a constant radius of 1, so you can see that if you were to project every single one of those points on the xy plane, you would just get a circle of radius 1, so the radius is not changing, which is just why you just have 1 in front of these two functions. And then 3t just means that you have um, this value is basically just increasing with z. And basically we're given that the helix is going to complete two full revolutions because it is going to go from 0 to 4 pi. So basically it is going to go around twice and that's how long the curve is going to be. So we're going to evaluate the line integral of this function within these limits. So the first thing we need to do is define what the element ds is going to be. So in this case, since you're dealing with a function of three variables, we're going to have to take three derivatives. So we're going to have dx over dt plus dy over dt squared and then plus dz over dt squared. So now we're just going to take each of those um, derivatives individually, so we're going to get the following. We're going to have here we're going to get differentiate this with respect to d, this becomes minus sine squared. Now the second one becomes cosine. And then the last one is going to be 3t squared, but if we differentiate that becomes 3, then 3 squared is 9. And we know that adding this to that is going to give us 1, so we're going to have 1 plus 9 times dt. And then this is going to become dt times square root of 10. So this is going to be our element of integration. And now what we're going to do is we're going to put in all those parametric equations into here. So our integral is going to become the following. We're going to have x, y, z over the whole ds. And now we're going to integrate from 0 to 4 pi. So those are the limits of integration here. Let me just go down a little bit. And now we're going to have the following. So x is going to be cosine of t. y is going to be sine of t z is going to be 3t and then ds is going to be this, so it's going to be square root of 10 times dt. Okay, so now what we need to do is, well, how about we take the two constants out, so we're going to have 3 square root of 10, 0 to 4 pi, and now we're going to have t times cosine of t sine t dt. And now we're going to have a look at this one. So basically we're going to have to use integration by parts. Well, we can do something very smart here. We can say, okay, how about we let u equal to sine t such that du becomes cosine of t times dt. And that way, if we use integration by parts, we can integrate this directly. So basically we're going to get the following. We're going to have integration by parts. The first term is going to be this function times the integral of this, which is going to be half of sine squared t. So hopefully you can see that this is the integral of that using substitution. So if you differentiate this, it, it goes back to this form. And then we're going to integrate that, so we're going to subtract that, and now we're going to have the derivative of this, which is just 1, times this whole thing we just integrated, so we have sine squared t dt, and then all of this is going to go from 0 to 4 pi. So that's essentially what this is going to come down to. And now what we can do here is to integrate that particular one, let's call this one i, to integrate this integral, we're just going to use the trigonometric substitution, so we're going to have half of half, and now we're going to get cosine 
actually it should be 1 minus. So it's 1 minus cosine of 2t dt. And let's see what this gives us. So we have 1 over 4. We're going to have t. And then minus 1 over 2 sine of 2t. plus some constant c, but since we're doing definite integration, that constant is going to vanish here. So if we now rewrite the whole integral, we're going to get 3 square root of 10, and then this is going to be t over 2 of sine squared t, minus 1 over 4t, plus, and then we're going to have this here, so this is going to be 1 over 8 sine of 2t and then all of this integrated from 0 to 4 pi alright let's see what we get well we know that for any multiple integers of pi sine is just gonna be 0 so and then for 0 it's also gonna be 0 so we know that this expression and this expression are going to disappear so basically we're going to have the following we're going to put 4 pi into here, so this becomes minus pi. And we're going to subtract the following. Now we're going to put 0 in there, so that just becomes 0. So in the end, we just get minus 3 pi square root of 10. So this should be the final value of our line integral. So as you just saw here, all we did was we took a parametric curve. In this case, it was just a helix. And it was given by this parametric equation. We got the limits of integration, which are basically just um, the extent to which that curve is going in space. And we had a function of three variables. First, we found the element of integration ds. And then we proceeded to just make substitutions in there to make this into a single integral. And then everything else just turned out to be fine as long as we use our uh, regular techniques of integration. So this is how you extend line integrals to the third dimension. Now you will also see integrals sometimes written in this form, so you will have something like some function of x, y, and z times dx plus another function of dy plus some other function x, y, z times dz. So this is another way in which you can find a line integral. So in that case, what you would need to do is, of course, you still represent x, y, and z in terms of a single parameter such as t. But then the dx, dy, and dz would also need to be computed in terms of dt. So basically, you would have dx uh, would be some kind of function. No, let's not call it g. Let's call it something like alpha of x, y, and z. Or actually, it would be a function of t in itself because we're making the substitution. So it would be something like this dt, then dy would be something like beta of t times dt, and then dz would just be equal to gamma of t times dt. So in the end, the, the, the whole idea is to replace this variable, um, these functions of three variables, by a function of a single variable, which is the parameter and every single function in there is just going to have that parameter in common. We won't deal too much with this, but we're going to get back to it a little bit later on once we introduce some more applications and concepts related to line integrals.